In lesson two, we will look at the struggles and the challenges of adolescence. Advances in technology mean today's teens are facing issues that no previous generation has ever seen. While some issues are not exactly new, electronic media has changed or amplified some of the struggles of young people face today. Teen social media and texting habits, as well as how they consume media, is changing the way they communicate, date, learn, sleep, exercise, and even more. In fact, the average teen spends over nine hours each day using their electronic devices. Here, I will briefly mention just some of the social problems teens struggle with every day. Depression. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, an estimated 3.2 million adolescents in the United States had at least one major depressive episode in 2017. That means about 13% of teenagers may experience depression before reaching adulthood. An analysis by the Pew Research Center reported that depression rates grew among adolescents, especially in girls, over the previous decade, when about 8% of teens reported being depressed in 2007. Bullying. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, about 20% of teens in the United States experienced bullying in 2017. One explanation the research has cited for this is the rise of social media use by teens, which has made bullying much more public and more pervasive. In fact, cyberbullying has replaced bullying as the common type of harassment that teens experience. Drug use. In 2017, about 6% of high school seniors reported using marijuana daily. Marijuana now exceeds cigarette use in teens today. In fact, many teens believe marijuana is less harmful now than in years past. This new perception may be due to the changing laws surrounding marijuana. Peer pressure. While peer pressure isn't a new issue, social media brings it to a whole new level. Sexting, for example, is a major cause for concern as many teens do not understand the lifelong consequences that sharing explicit photos can have on their lives. But sharing inappropriate photos is not the only thing kids are being pressured into these days. More and more kids are being pressured into having sex, doing drugs, and even bullying other kids. Now let us look at the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 verses 11 through 24. We've all read this story before and are very familiar with it. Permit me to give a brief summary. A father had two sons and all hell breaks loose when the younger one insults the father by wishing him dead, collecting his part of the inheritance and squandering it on sin. Finding himself broke and competing with pigs for food, he comes to his senses and decides to return home as a hired hand. Then all heaven breaks loose. The father violates the social norms of his day by running out to meet his sinful son. Unexpectedly, the father fully restores his son's status and the celebration begins. The father rejoices that his dead son is alive and home. This son enters into his father's mercy with filial trust. When we are young, we may identify more with the son who sinned by squandering his inheritance or the brother who resented the attention his father was giving him. As we grow older and have families of our own, we may identify more with the father who forgave his son and welcomed him home again. However, at all the stages of our life, we feel the love that our father in heaven has for us every time we read the story in the Bible. God's love and forgiveness is the words that come alive and live in our hearts. We can all identify with doing something wrong and the need to ask for forgiveness. 
We know what it is like to be young and self-centered, pursuing fun and a good time as the main focus of our lives, instead of realizing the value of our faith and family. Our home life and even the Krubono may seem boring when we are young, so we want to go off into the world in pursuit of more glamorous, exciting things to do. Some of us may make some pretty serious errors too, before we finally wake up and realize how foolish we have become. It's possible that our behavior may also hurt some of the members of our own family too. And it is true what people say, that we sometimes have to hit rock bottom before we realize our behavior has become self-destructive. What is really unique about the father in this story about the prodigal son though, is the fact that he gave his son his inheritance and allowed him to take it and leave. He respected his son's decision and allowed him to go and live the life he had chosen for himself. The father surely knew that the son was making a mistake, but he did not impose his will on his son and make him stay, even though it probably broke his heart that he left. Our Heavenly Father is like that too. He respects us too much to restrict our free will. He gave us free will and the freedom to pursue our lives however we see fit. God is smarter than we are though, because he knows that all paths eventually lead back to him. But when we do return to the Lord, it is of our own free will, and that is when our love becomes genuine. This is ultimately what God wants, for us to discover ourselves, how much we need him, how much we love him, because he never stopped loving us. The younger son in the parable represents the needs and struggles of an adolescent. Who is an adolescent? To answer this question, let us first look at the definition of the word adolescence. Adolescence comes from the Latin words ad, which means to, and alicere, grow up. To grow up then, is the main developmental task of adolescence. And this begins with the biological changes of puberty. The stage of adolescence is from age 12 to 18. And this is a very crucial time because one's ego has to have its needs met and ego conflicts are to be resolved. The foremost task of adolescence is the building up of ego identity. The younger son in the parable seems to be struggling to establish his ego identity. Ego identity is an important concern for an adolescent. The younger son's demand to give me the share of my property is an inner cry for this identity. He wants to develop an identity for himself as a person, separate from his parents, outgrowing the psychological fusion with his father. He wants to overcome his dependence on his father's protection. The striving for separateness from parents explains certain patterns and behaviors among teenagers. It is common among teenagers to adopt unconventional ways of dressing, various hairstyles, makeup, showing off, exhibitionism, and even a style of life. They try to demonstrate how different from their parents they are. When you walk into the room of a teenager, you will see pictures of film stars, sports stars, or other people whom they emulate. They are trying to communicate through these posters that they have not yet found an identity for themselves. So they are borrowing the identity of men and women who have established their identity in society, and they like to live their lives through this borrowed identity. There are three conditions that need to be met for the ego to be satisfied. First, to be able to do what it wants to do. Second, to have what it wants to have. And third, to hear good things spoken about it by others. Ego then can be understood as the combination of these three things. 
namely doing, having, and listening to words of appreciation and praise. The ego is happy when we can do all three of these things. The ego is sad when we are not able to do what we really want to do. When we are unable to have what we really want to have. And when we hear negative things spoken about us. The younger son in the parable wanted to experience the things he wanted. He wanted to have the things he liked to have. And he wanted to have some good times with his friends. The needs behind his demand, give me the share of my property, were the needs of the ego. Adolescence is the time when the ego needs to dominate and demand things from the outside. It is a difficult task to form and accept one's identity. The adolescent experiments and the different roles and ideologies that they try during adolescence is done to determine the best fit for themselves. Some people emerge from this difficult stage with a strong sense of identity, and they feel equipped to face the adult world with a sense of confidence. Others fail to achieve an identity, and they do not have the confidence to face the challenges of adult life, and they experience an identity crisis. Identity crisis means that they do not know who and what they are, where they belong, where they are going, or why they are doing what they are doing. As a result, they drop out of the normal life condition, education, job, relationships, and they seek a negative identity, one opposite to that prescribed by family and society. An adolescent with an identity crisis may become a delinquent or a loner and can get into addiction to drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography, or other dysfunctional behaviors. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, approximately 5% of high school students drop out of high school each year in the United States. This can be partly attributed to this The prodigal son experienced an identity crisis because he could not find an identity for himself despite playing different roles and living different ideologies. He experienced all that he wanted to experience, had all that he wanted to have, and he had a good time with his friends, spending everything he had with them. Having done all of these things, he felt no belonging to anyone. He found no meaning in his life, felt lonely and empty, and was fed up of himself, and he was physically, emotionally, and spiritually drained. His identity crisis awakened him to see his identity in his father. He said, 
I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. The return of the younger son to the father, the warm embrace and welcome, and a celebration that followed indicates the new identity of the son. He has found his identity. His new identity is understood in his relationship with his father and his family. During the time of adolescence, it is important for the adolescent to find their identity in Christ. Who am I? To do this, one must ask themselves, what do I believe about my relationship with God? And do I believe that he loves me? While the parable of the prodigal son appears to show a time of painful struggle during adolescence, it also highlights that it can lead to joyful living and a time of emerging possibilities. Spiritually, becoming an adult means the establishment of a relationship with the innermost self or the person of God. This innate need for the spiritual meaning expressed by the prodigal son before he returned to his father and his striving for it has resulted in the evolution of world religions and spiritual journeys on an individual level. People seek spiritual experience because they want a larger perspective on life. They want the greater meaning and a feeling of security and protection especially in the face of all the uncertainties of life. A spiritual perspective means the realization of the smallness of the ego personality in relationship to the person of God. The story of the younger son in the parable is the story of an adolescent who looks for his ego identity by doing what he wanted to do, experiencing all that he wanted to experience and by hanging out with his friends. Then he comes to realize that his true identity comes from his relationship with his father. In God alone, who is the father to us, we have our true identity. All other identities are false identities. Psychological research on identity formation in adolescence reveals that there are four identity states. The first identity state we are going to look at is disoriented youth. These are youth who are confused about who they are and what they want in life. They are unable to focus and begin their identity search. They live their lives in a haphazard or happy-go-lucky way. This can be made worse by drug or alcohol abuse and other dysfunctional behaviors. These youth are unable to commit themselves to their responsibilities or studies and to life itself. They may also become addicted to sexual acts or technology such as the internet, cell phones, and social media. Imitated identity. These are youth who have given up the search for an identity or have not yet begun the search because they have substituted the identity of a parent or some other adult as their own. While these youth may appear to know what they want, in reality, they do what they think others want them to want. For example, a child might want to become a doctor because their parents are doctors. They do not stop to evaluate their own capabilities or interests. 
these youth will then get frustrated and say to themselves, this is not me. I did not choose this. And they will begin to seek who they are and what they want.
Identity through opposition. These are youth who do not commit themselves to any values or careers. They constantly keep questioning and searching to discover what they really want and who they are. They question authority and rebel against conventional ways to differentiate themselves from the collective group. They form their identities by seeing themselves in opposition to something. They challenge parents, teachers, and those in authority in their legitimate quest for their own values and beliefs. Healthy Identity These are youth who have discovered a sense of who they are. They can make commitments and take responsibilities which stem from their deeper understanding of their own personality. They see themselves as people who have their own ideas and know what they believe and why they believe it. They are content to be what they are and who they are. An important psychological change that occurs in adolescence is an increase in intellectual ability. A small child is only capable of concrete problem solving, but an adolescent is capable of abstract thinking and logical arguing. When adolescents use this mental power, they may irritate their parents. The argumentativeness of the adolescent is not to be taken by parents as a personal attack or disobedience. Rather, it is a necessary process that they go through on the road to independence. The adolescent begins to establish internal authority by challenging the adult's authority. During adolescence, the individual faces a wide range of emotions. Happiness is experienced as joy, exuberance, and excitement, and sadness is experienced as depression, unhappiness, anxiety, fear, etc. Feelings of anger, rebellion, and protest also emerge. Emotions of loyalty, patriotism, and sacrifice for the nation also develop at this stage. Emotions are felt intensively by teenagers, and they tend to express these emotions in an exaggerated form. Mood swings are another important feature of adolescent emotions. Sometimes they are happy, and at other times they are sad. Sometimes they are full of energy, but other times they are lazy. This mood swing makes their behavior unpredictable. Sex-related emotions like crushes also begin to surface at this stage. During this time, adolescents undergo bodily changes of puberty. This development includes rapid gain in height and weight, resulting from increased muscle development in boys and body fat in girls. Development of sexual characteristics like growth of pubic hair, menstruation for girls, penis growth and voice changes for boys, growth of underarm hair, and facial hair growth for boys. During this time, teens may sleep longer, girls may become overly sensitive about weight, and adolescents may ask more direct questions about sex. Sexual development is part of physical change and it includes the fulfilling of sexual needs and channelizing sexual energy. Most adolescents go through a psychologically painful struggle 
of enjoying sexual pleasures, but feel guilt and shame about doing it. Not only are adolescents dealing with sexual urges, but also the question of sexual orientation. Body type is also a focus of attention in adolescence. Girls are more likely to be focused on their weight and boys become fascinated by muscle development. Self-esteem is also being acquired. Girls acquire self-esteem by being viewed as popular and well-liked and are influenced by images portrayed in the media about the female body and seek to live up to those standards. Boys acquire self-esteem by being viewed as capable and proficient in some activity. For example, sports. And they judge themselves by the physical skills and activities. Christian teenagers attempting to grow in godliness tend to face a series of unique challenges. First of all, the teenage years are full of growth. They are growing physically, socially, emotionally, and dealing with all the hormonal challenges. So for Christian teenagers, growth in godliness sometimes tends to take a back seat, especially if somebody is not behind them, really speaking in their ear and reminding them that they need to be prioritizing it. Teenagers are already being asked to grow in all these different ways and to also grow in godliness, especially during a time when the world is increasingly hostile to the Christian culture. Adolescents need to have an understanding of the deep-rooted presence of God through the Holy Spirit. Spiritually, becoming an adult means establishing a relationship with God. And while it may appear from the parable of the prodigal son that adolescence is a time of painful struggle, it is also a reminder that it can lead to joyful living and it can also be a time of emerging possibilities. People seek greater spiritual experiences because they want a larger perspective on life. They want greater meaning and a feeling of security and protection, especially in the face of the uncertainties of life. A spiritual perspective means the realization of the smallness of the ego personality in relationship to God. The story of the younger son in the gospel is a story of an adolescent who looks for his ego identity by doing what he wanted to do, experiencing all that he wanted to experience, and by hanging out with his friends. Then he realizes his true identity comes from his relationship with his father. In God alone, who is a father to all of us, we have our true identity. We are children of God. All other identities are false identities.